Welcome to Configuring Electronic Health Records, Meaningful Use and Implementation. This is Lecture B. The learning objectives for this unit, Meaningful Use and Implementation, are to describe the implementation of Meaningful Use, or MU, of electronic health records in the context of the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health, HITECH Act and demonstrate examples of MU using the VISTA Electronic Health Record, or EHR, system. This lecture describes the actual appearance and data options of the electronic health record. It will give examples of meaningful use using the VISTA Electronic Health Record, or EHR, of the Veterans Administration, or VA. The discussion builds on the configuration exercises of previous units and explains how the meaningful use criteria are related to those exercises. We will begin by looking at clinical reminders. Later slides will show the Clinical Decision Support, or CDS Cover Sheet View Screen, the CDS List Screen, and the CDS Resolving Process View. Another feature includes data entry and document creation. The slides will show lab ordering, the template editor screen, the template field editor view, and the roll and scroll document creation screen. The roll and scroll view is the text only back end of the system that is used by clinical application coordinators to build the graphical user screens. The slides will also look at order sets, using the example of an order set for diabetes mellitus or DM with a laboratory selected and options for order checks. Finally, quality reporting for diabetes will be discussed. This screenshot of the VISTA EHR program shows the view that a provider would see on the Computerized Patient Record System, or CPRS, the Windows interface for the EHR. The slide shows the cover sheet view, which provides relevant information in a single screen, making information retrieval more convenient for the provider. Patient identifiers such as name, medical record number, and date of birth are shown at the top left of the screen. Next to the patient identifiers is a box that shows the location of the patient. In this slide, the patient is noted as being an inpatient and also the name of the provider. Care teams are also noted in this region of the chart, as is the name of the primary attending physician. Under the patient identifiers is a box that lists the patient's active problems. In this case, the problems are urinary tract infection, type 2 diabetes mellitus, congestive heart failure, basal cell carcinoma, and breast cancer. Next to the active problems box, allergies and adverse reactions are noted. In this case, the patient has allergies or adverse reactions to aspirin, sulfa drugs, strawberries, peanuts, and oranges. This section of the screen also notes any specific postings, such as advanced directives. Under the active problems box, the active medications are listed. This patient is taking a number of medications for the treatment of diabetes and is also taking acetaminophen. Under the active medications box, the screen enumerates the recent lab tests that have been performed on this patient. Also on the screen are the clinical reminders about tasks that need to be completed for this patient, based on the patient's age, sex, family history, or past medical history. These tasks may be needed for routine preventive screening or to identify specific problems. Clinical reminders use pre-existing electronic patient information to alert the provider about when an action is recommended. The reminders allow providers to consider guideline-based advice for the patient. For this patient, clinical reminders that have been identified include a hepatitis C risk assessment, pap smear screening, mammogram screening, the need for influenza vaccination, and given the patient's history of diabetes, a diabetic foot exam. The diabetic foot exam has been highlighted, which opens a new window at the bottom right of the screen that notes that the foot exam is required annually for all diabetes patients. This screenshot shows the CPRS view where a provider would see the patient's clinical reminders list. The provider can view the reminders and take actions after seeing this information. Some details are the same as on other screenshots. Patient identifiers, such as name, medical record number, and date of birth, 
are shown at the top left of the screen. Next to the patient identifiers is a box showing the location of the patient and the name of the provider. Care teams and the name of the primary attending physician are also noted in this region of the chart. This screen also shows the clinical reminders list. Under the patient demographics is an audit of the last 100 electronically signed notes so that providers can see what new notes have been entered in the chart. Highlighting a specific provider note reveals the contents of that note. Under the list of signed notes, reminders specific to the patient are enumerated, listed by when they are due. An icon with a highlighted clock indicates that these reminders are due. This reminders box can be minimized by clicking on the small triangular symbol just to the left of the box title. As you may have already realized, this screenshot demonstrates the ability to display the same content, in this case, a list of clinical reminders for this particular patient, in different forms and in different screens. This slide shows the Clinical Reminders Resolution Process, or CPRS, screen. In other words, this screenshot shows the events that occur when a particular selection is made on the screen that was described previously. That screenshot showed the patient's clinical reminders listed by when they were due. The clock icon indicated that these reminders are due now. This screenshot demonstrates that clicking on any one of the enumerated reminders opens up a new window, which allows an action that will resolve the reminder. In this case, the diabetic foot exam reminder has been selected by clicking on it, which has opened a new window titled Reminder Resolution Diabetic Foot Exam at the right of the screen. This resolution window has a different colored background, light gray, that differentiates it from the regular CPRS view windows, which has a white background. This allows providers to quickly identify that this is a different type of window. The resolution window has a number of different options that can be checked, allowing the provider to enter specific documentation into the EHR or to place orders. In this screenshot, the options available in the resolution window are statements that the diabetic foot exam has been performed today in the clinic. The patient has had an exam performed elsewhere. The patient refuses a diabetic foot exam. The patient is a bilateral amputee or the provider is unable to confirm a diagnosis of diabetes. A final option is marked Other, which does not turn off the reminder. Selecting any other option will turn off the reminder. The resolution window also contains a checkbox to place an order for a podiatry consultation. This screenshot shows the view that a clinical coordinator would see on CPRS pertaining to data entry for lab orders, as in other screenshots. This one includes patient identifiers such as name, medical record number, and date of birth, the location of the patient, the name of the provider, the relevant care teams, and the name of the primary attending physician. Under the demographic information, specific orders can be viewed. At the left of the screen, a box shows the types of orders that can be written on this patient. Most of the screen on the right shows a list of active orders, including pending and recent activity. The start and stop times of these orders and the provider who ordered them are also noted. This list of orders represents all the active orders that are still due on this patient. This box has a different colored background than the default white background to allow practitioners to identify that a different type of information is provided in this window. Clicking on any of the orders at the left of the screen opens a new window. Options are available to write orders, including diet plans, vital signs, urinalysis, inpatient and outpatient medications, infusions, lab and imaging tests, consultations, and other miscellaneous types of orders. In this example, laboratory has been selected. This has opened a box titled Order a Lab Test that contains specific information. The top left of this window is a list of different lab tests that can be ordered. The top right indicates the type of sample that must be collected, such as urine or blood and also specifies if the urgency is routine or stat. Under this information, collection type is shown, which means whether it can be done at the bedside or if the patient must be sent to the lab. Also noted are the collection date and time and how often the test should be done, 
such as one time, daily, every other day, or some other option. There is a button for accepting the order and another button for exiting this window. This screenshot shows the CPRS view of the template editor. Providers can create their own specific templates that can be individualized. A template consists of fields that allow data to be imported into the EHR or displayed at the user interface in a personalized fashion. This screen shows the options available to create or edit a template. At the top right of the screen is a button that allows the creation of a new template. A menu of options including Edit, Action, and Tools is available on the top left of the screen. Below this is a box with a list of shared templates, such as those from Cardiology, Dermatology, Endocrinology, Ophthalmology, or Geriatrics. Next to them is a list of personal templates that have been created by the end user. Properties of the shared templates are also listed to the right of the personal templates box, including the name of the template, the type, and its properties, such as display only, active or inactive, and displayed or hidden. Under these boxes is a window that can display the template boilerplate, which means the pre-filled text associated with the template. There are checkboxes that allow editing of shared templates and show template notes at the bottom left of the screen. Buttons to accept, cancel, or apply selections are available at the bottom right of the screen. This slide is a screenshot of the CPRS window that pops up when the provider makes a selection on the Data Entry Template Field Editor. At the top right of this window are buttons to delete, copy, or create new fields. The left-hand side of this window shows a number of template fields that are searchable. These template fields may be text fields or specific elements such as time, date, or checkboxes that can be inserted into the template. In the example in this screenshot, the template field has been selected for diabetic foot exam. The type of field here is a checkbox. Upon selecting this template field, a window to the right of the screen shows the name of the template field, the type of template field, and the item associated with the field, which in this case reads, well-fitting shoes, see podiatrist for foot care, keep toenails clipped, inspect all surfaces of both feet, check temperature of feet, and never go barefoot. When this field is applied, any one of these selections can be checked. Other areas in this window indicate whether items in the template field are active or inactive need to be displayed in CPRS as separate lines, and are required or not. Formatting such as indents can also be specified in this field. The bottom of the screen has a checkbox to hide inactive fields. There are also buttons to preview, accept, cancel, or apply the fields that have been edited or created. This screenshot shows the process of document creation from the back-end review of the patient. This view, also known as the roll and scroll view, is more limited in usability and in essence looks like the DOS or Unix screens on older computers. This environment does not have windows or boxes. The example in this slide is the screen that is used to create definitions for specific documents. Different types of documents are used in the EHR, such as progress notes, discharge summaries, and laboratory reports. This functionality of the EHR allows the end user to specify or create definitions for clinical documents. The top of the screen identifies the environment, in this case, create document definitions and the date. The clinical documents available are progress notes, addendum, discharge summary, clinical procedures, lab reports, and surgical reports. Each choice is associated with a number, which is used to select the choice. The user has a limited number of options on this screen, such as selecting the next level, restarting, inserting boilerplate text, or deleting documents. The Order Checks selection window allows clinical users to determine what types of order checks will be applied when they are using the EHR. Selecting individual user options in CPRS brings up this window. Tabs at the top of the window indicate general options, notifications, order checks, which has been selected in this screenshot, lists and teams, notes, reports, and graphs. 
These selections allow the end user to customize the look and actions of the EHR. In this screenshot, the Order Checks tab has been selected. This has brought up a list of order checks and a comment that end users can enable or disable the order checks here. Order checks may include allergy contrast media interactions, allergy drug interactions, clinical drug interactions, duplicate drug orders, or others. There is a checkbox next to each order check so that they can be turned on or off to enable or disable them. At the bottom of this window are buttons to accept changes, cancel them, or apply them without exiting the window. This screenshot describes the sequence of events that occurs when a specific order set is selected, when a reminder is issued by the system. In this example, a diabetes reminder has fired. This appears as a new window overlying the primary CPRS screen. The new window is titled Diabetic Reminder. This window lists the lab tests that are associated with the reminder, such as hemoglobin A1c, serum glucose, and urine microalbumin, all of which are tests that show whether diabetes is well controlled. Kidney function tests such as BUN and creatinine are included because diabetes can damage the kidneys. This window also allows the user to order diabetes-related consultations, such as for nutrition, diabetic eye exam, or podiatry. Upon selecting the diabetic order set, the end user is given several options for lab tests that can be ordered. This pops up as a new window, which lists the available lab tests in alphabetical order. Similar to a previous screenshot pertaining to lab tests, this window specifies the type of sample that is collected such as blood or urine, and whether the test is routine or urgent. The collection type, date, and time are also noted on this window. The bottom right of the window has buttons to accept the order and to quit. This screenshot demonstrates how selecting a specific order set associated with a chronic disease, such as diabetes, will open up a window that allows the clinician to make specific order selections that have been prompted as a consequence of the reminder system. This screenshot shows the CPRS view that allows the provider to make quality reports associated with a specific patient diagnosis. In this case, the example is diabetes. Clinicians benefit from viewing summaries or reports of the patient's clinical condition. Reports are aggregations of different types of information that has been collected and collated in a concise form to allow the viewer to gain understanding of the patient's condition by viewing documentation in one place instead of in multiple areas of the EHR. Different types of reports include clinical reports, which may be recorded by one clinician for reading by other clinicians, Transfer reports, which summarize patient information when care is transferred from one team to another. Reports during physician rounds, which provide brief summaries of relevant information that can be used to discuss the patient's clinical condition when members of the interdisciplinary team are visiting patients. And imaging and lab reports, which are summaries of tests. Other reports include assessments of nutrition, prescriptions, summaries of procedures or orders in a specific date range, ad hoc reports that indicate if clinical reminders have been addressed, and reports on whether quality parameters of care have been achieved. This screenshot provides an example of an ad hoc report, which summarizes the diabetic reminders for this patient. The report acts as a marker of quality care because it allows providers to assess whether appropriate quality measures have been fulfilled and whether appropriate reminders have been addressed during the episode of care. As in other screenshots for specific patients, this screen includes patient identifiers such as name, medical record number, and date of birth, the location of the patient, the name of the provider, the care teams involved, and the name of the primary attending physician. Under the Demographics section, at the left, is a list of all available reports. In this example, the ad hoc report is selected, which brings up a box on the right with details of the health summary ad hoc report. The report shows that this patient is due for a diabetic foot exam, and it reminds the clinician that a diabetic foot exam is required every year for patients with diabetes mellitus type 2. 
The clinician can therefore place appropriate orders to meet the standard of care. This concludes Lecture B of Meaningful Use and Implementation. This lecture showed how most of the criteria for meaningful use of the EHR can be demonstrated using the VISTA EHR of the U.S. Veterans Administration. It also demonstrated implementation of the following meaningful use criteria in VISTA. Clinical reminders, data entry and document creation, order sets, and quality reporting. This also concludes the unit on meaningful use and implementation. In summary, this unit described the Meaningful Use Program of HITECH, criteria for achieving incentive payments, and how they might be implemented using the VA VISTA system as an example.